G'day team. Hey guys. Not too sure how this video is going to go today. We both don't really feel like doing this one it's today. Be a good shot for you guys. But today's topic is mental health. And we also wanted to tell you a little bit about what we have just previously been through. Yep. But before we get into it, we'd just like to say a huge thank you so much for all of your love and support. We're so, so, so blown away. Well, not blown away. We know you guys love us, but it's just been so overwhelmingly beautiful so thank you incredible like i truly feel you guys have helped us get through this yep. and you know we're still getting through this and this isn't going to be a wham bam thank you ma'am <laughs> this is going to be a bit of a process i was like we're going to do a video i was like yay <laughs> We'll get but through it. Yeah, we're showing sure up. And I think it's um a really good topic, you know, mental health and how important it is with health and fitness. Um, so just recently, we had a miscarriage. Yeah. And me personally, I I didn't know about this too much. I mean, we've been trying to conceive a a baby for it's been eight attempts, so eight months previous yeah. to. Step falling Which, pregnant in hindsight like we're actually really <clears throat> lucky like there's a lot of you know, families out there that have got a lot worse than us so yeah we don't want to take away from that either like we know that we're, we're still very lucky um the fact that we can conceive yeah um, but during the eight times previously steph had a miscarriage and it was four weeks and i thought that was normal that's when it all happens nothing i sort of dealt with that one a lot easier than this. I feel it's four weeks. It was the first time that it happened to me. So it, it just honestly felt like a normal period to me. Like yeah. we found out we were pregnant, but then it just sort of went away really fast. So I didn't have the time mm. to get connected and, you know, attached to anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that one wasn't easy, but it was a lot easier than what we've just been through. That's for sure. Yeah. So Steph was 13 and a half weeks or 13 weeks and five days. And on the same day as yeah, it, so that it morning, happened. That morning we went and had the nuchal translucency scan, which is a scan to make sure that the baby's healthy. Um, and long story short, we had all of the blood tests done. We had an NIPT test done as well, and that's come back with no dramas. We had all of our doctors say that our baby was really healthy, and we got to see it on the screen that morning. And it was, yep. it was really beautiful. and. I suppose I feel that's why we were so shocked as mm. the tone of the day was it was it was such a beautiful day like we it was really good vibes like um it was the first time I got to see the baby on the monitor yeah. and the the lady was saying wow this is such an active child it's so healthy I see no dramas with it you're you're both obviously extremely healthy um it's all looking a-okay -okay. Uh, you'll get your um results back shortly yeah. And um, we actually found out today that it was going to be a little girl and um, it was going to be extremely healthy, um, which yeah. we were very surprised. Um, but it you know, it was probably one of the hardest phone calls I've had to have, but yeah, and it was inevitable. Yeah, um, we knew it was possibly going to come back healthy, we just didn't know what sex it was, but it's come back a little girl so. When we did name our child Heaven, it suited really well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, it was the same. It was the same day as we got the scan. Beautiful feedback. We went to the beach afterwards, and it was just good vibes. We just couldn't stop talking. All this goodness. It was yeah. so amazing. And then it was that night around. I sort of. I did. Um, I did have cramps and pains for a few days before, and I did let the doctors know about that. And they said it can be normal, you know, you're just growing. And I just thought this was a part of pregnancy, so I didn't think anything of it. And then that afternoon, I was still cramping, but again, I feel like I'm pretty tolerant to pain. It was fine. It was nothing that you know debilitated me. And then yeah, it was that night that I just literally hit the floor. We finished yeah. watching the movie. And yeah, we watched a movie. It would have been about eight thirty, and Steph buckled over and said. Geez, these cramps are really bad. And I didn't know at the time. Like I still, the entire way through it happening, I still didn't compute that it was that. I just thought, oh, something's wrong. You know, like I must have some sort of something wrong with my health. I just still didn't compute that it was the baby because we just, we just heard that it was so healthy. So yeah. 
And I, I thought this is what women have to go through when they're pregnant. They're going to start getting cramps. I just didn't know. So yeah, the contractions, now that I know what it was, it was happening and they just kept getting closer and closer together. And um, yeah, it was pretty full on. And we were getting ready for bed. So Joel was in bed and I, was I, just, in bed. I sort of just kept coming into him. And I was like, he said, you know, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm okay. I was brushing my teeth. And then all of a sudden it just got worse and worse. And I was back and forth from the toilet and I thought, oh, I've eaten something. <laughs> this is my brain. I, I thought I had too much cheese or something. Yeah, we thought, <laughs> you're, on, like, you're on the challenge. Why are you having cheese? <laughs> he thought it was the cheese. Like, this is literally, again, we were midway through everything happening and we still didn't compute it. So then when I saw what I saw, it was just my brain couldn't keep up fast enough with what, what was happening. So. Yeah, so... Um, I don't know if it was your water breaking, but um, all this stuff ended up coming out and you, yeah, you started panicking. So you stayed on the toilet and I was sort of falling asleep by then, but I was awake when this was happening. And then it was like, it feels like two seconds ago, Steph's scream. It was the loudest. I've never heard a scream like this and her saying its legs are out. It was like, I was up out of bed. Like I just bounced out of bed. I couldn't believe when I ran in and she showed me. It was just, uh, I, it's so just. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want him to see any more than that because it was just a lot. Um, and yeah, just to see like the whole body come out and then the little hands and it was just so much to take in and it still is because yep. I'm still trying to. I suppose make sense of it and yep. you know everyone that I've spoken to even professionally there is no making sense of it these things just happen and I feel like that's the hardest thing is Joel and I as you know prior to this we like to find a problem and then find the solution but there's not really a solution no. to this it's just accepting that you know everything happens for a reason it and does. all of those mantras that we go on with that sound like you know positive talk it we know it's true it's just really hard to digest it yeah. right now i'm lucky in a way because i saw the legs and then as it went a bit further i saw the arms and that was it for me all i was there i just went to steph's side and i was just there for moral support i wasn't going to look anymore i was just going to make sure this is going to come out okay steph's health is number one to yeah. me right now so um I didn't have to see too much of it, but Steph ended up seeing everything. So I can only imagine what she's going through. Yeah. And this is gonna be a bit of a process for her. Um, this isn't gonna be fixed quickly. Um, so we're gonna make sure we're gonna seek out the right help and support for Steph. And, um, and you, I feel like, um, you know, a lot of the times people forget that the men, the men go through this as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's the same thing, even though it's physical for me. Um, yeah, it would be, you know, I can't imagine what Joel's going through. And especially because he's been such a rock for me. He's had to feel like, you know, he's had to be there for support for me. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Now, we'll get through this team. And um, we sort of just wanted to take you for a, a little bit of the journey of what happened. Um, the ambulance came around. It would have been about one o'clock in the morning. Steph took off to hospital because the baby ended up coming out and the people from the hospital were just sensational. Um, she couldn't really get the placenta out, so they rushed her to hospital and they ended up, there's a few funny stories in there about the needle and stuff, but Steph just does not want the needles, does not want the painkillers, keeps I, it nice and natural, which is amazing. I literally refused every bit of pain medication that they offered me from the moment they arrived to the moment I got to the hospital. And yeah, so I was really having a lot of trouble delivering the rest of the placenta. It just would not come out and it was very uncomfortable. It was very awkward. I was, it was very confronting. I had a lot of, you know, um, strangers just all up in me. And yeah, I just, it was a lot to take in. Um, so then they, they said to me that the best way to get this out um, for those medical people that are in here is the um, oxytocin, oxytocin injection in my leg. Um, I've never had a needle. What's, the, what's this needle do? It loosens up. So it produces a hormone which 
helps you to naturally deliver the placenta. Yeah. Um, I feel like I don't know much about it, but I feel like you naturally would what na- your body would naturally produce this when you've had a baby because you would have oxytocin. Yeah. Um, and I this was about two thirty in the morning. Steph was in obviously a lot of pain, both physically and mentally and we're all tired so she was like okay let's go let's go with the needle (laughs) the the midwife put this no so i just want to add i said to joel okay i'll get the needle like just do what you need to do and then she like lifted up my like hospital gown and i was like what are you doing and she's like it's in your leg i'm like my leg and then I said to Joel, I was like, I don't know about this. I've never had a needle. And I'm like, like, yeah, you can he's like, it. no, it's fine. You're good with needles now. Like assuring me that I've had this before. So I was like, oh yeah, I am actually. I've, I've conquered my fear of needles. I can do this. Yep. Yeah, okay. So I had Joel on this side of me. He was leant over the bed and I was holding his hand, just focusing on him. And um, yeah, she stabbed my leg and I think my leg almost broke the needle. Like it, <laughs> I rejected it. And I screamed because I was like, what the hell just happened? I feel like someone got a machete and corked the side of my leg and no one gave me a warning of this. Like Joel's job was to say, this is going to hurt, love. This is going to hurt because he's had a needle in his leg before. I feel like that was his one job. <laughs> so this, <laughs> we had a- the poor midwife got n- no, none of the injection in there. So she threw the needle in. Steph kicked her pretty much <laughs> other side of the room and stared at me and it's like, help me. I've screamed much, at me like talking about this this has been the one thing that i feel has brought a smile to our faces because i just thought it was so funny that i was in the amount of pain that i was and i went through everything that i did and that was the thing that broke me was the needle and i just thought what's going so on so she just had to do it the old school way and um... no well she said you've got two options you either have to get this needle or you have to like you have to push this out yourself and it was like I and Joel was excited too because it was like every single muscle, like my back muscles came into play. Like I looked like I was ready to do my one RM, <laughs> my best lift yet. And it was like I just had this mission, and I was like, I don't know what that needle, and I got it all out on my own. Yeah, and she was it. She was down into this squat, ass to the grass, <laughs> right down on the bed, and Again, the so midwife was saying, you know, anyway. cough, let's cough. <laughs> And so Steph was down into this heavy squat. You guys and don't she, need this visual. She was coughing, <laughs> coughing, and then she was losing her breath. And I, that's when I saw the muscles all ramp up. And she <laughs> sort of, she's like, just wait. And then she looked away to the side and corner of my eye. And I was like, yes, she knows the mission. And I'm hitting the midwife. I'm like, she's pumped. She's going to push this shit out. It's all over. This is all over. You can pretty much pack up. Everyone pack up. And then Steph started laughing and then obviously and then once had the good portion. To the end of it, like again, like in a, in a moment that there's no way I thought that a smile was even going to come across my face, Joel managed to make it funny. Like yep. we just, even though it was so painful for both of us, we like Joel definitely tried his best to try and bring some light to the situation. It didn't mean that it made it better. It didn't mean that, you know, we weren't still in the same pain. It just... It just livened it somewhat just by finding that one bit of joy yep. in such a traumatic event. Well, look, we're very lucky that we've got each other. Yeah. And when one person's down, usually the other person lifts up their game to lift each other to up. Lift Joel up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when Steph's around and I'm seeing like, even now, this is straight after Steph's had a miscarriage, her hormones are way out of whack. So whenever we're around each other, I need to lift my game. No matter how I'm feeling, we don't really want to do this video at the moment, but we feel seeing all the response and the amazing stories behind the scenes. So many people have people been that through have this. People through it as well. I feel like that's been a real... Because before this happened, I didn't... I didn't know that this was a thing that Same. was such a common So thing. common. I initially, when this was happening, because I saw what I saw that day and I thought we have the healthiest baby, my immediate thoughts were, what's wrong with me? What did I do? Yeah. What didn't I do? And a lot of people. Uh, and, you know, it, it come down to literally like I ate Subway. I had a Subway wrap thing, salad, chicken and salad Subway. It was healthy, but I had it and I was like, it must have been the Subway because it was processed meat. Like this is- And this is what I keep explaining to Steph. You can, this is what my brain You can is search as much as you want, but you'll never really find the answer of why this happens. This is just what happens. Yeah. 
from what the research that we've been doing, so many people have been through miscarriage before. We are extremely lucky that it was 13 weeks and five days only. Same day, a girl that I used to train, nine months pregnancy on the day of the pregnancy, sleeping baby. Couldn't think of anything worse. So there's, we're very lucky that it was so early and just some of these messages of love and support, but the amount of people that have been through this and how common it is, and a lot of people thanking us because they felt like they were alone. They felt like something was wrong with them. And then us posting that video, I was bawling my eyes out making that video, but us posting that video has helped a lot of people realize they're not alone on this mission. Um, so as I was saying before, we're lucky to have each other and I go through the grieving stage too when Steph's not around and I'm lucky to be working on the property. I've got, we've got acreage and you know, there's every now and then I just break down and I, I have my moments. Um, but you know, when Steph's around, I sort of just lift my game as much as possible and try and inspire her that, you know, everything does Sorry, just... happen for a reason. Everything does happen for a reason. Um, the universe has got a plan for each and every one of us, whether it's the universe that you believe in or God or Buddha or Allah, we are all here at the perfect time. This has all happened for a reason. We've all got a plan and it's all perfect. So I just wanted to remind you guys that no matter what you guys are going through, it's all meant to be. I know they, what we've just been through is nothing compared to what a lot of people out there are going through. We totally get it. And I can now resonate with, I don't know how hard it is to, to hear positivity now when you're so low, like when you know you hear, oh, it's meant to be, it's, you know, it's just obviously what the universe had, you know, in store for you. It's what God's plan was. It's really hard to hear that when you're so low, but I do believe it. It's just, I can now empathize with those people on the other side. Pumpkin's just, he's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we wanna talk a little bit about mental health. And yeah. you know, I personally got into health and fitness, it would have been about mm. 13, 14 years ago. And back then, mental health wasn't really spoken about too much. It's blown up the last few years, especially with social media and technology. And I truly believe that's one of the reasons why mental health is so important because um, there's so much toxicity out there. Yeah. But when I personally started health and fitness back in the day, I didn't realize I was ticking a lot of boxes for my own personal mental health and just doing a bit of research recently and what we can do post miscarriage and how to go around it. Um, I feel like this is a good um, subject to touch on. So number one that I wanted to sort of touch base with is keeping active. Now we're lucky because our business is health and fitness um, and being active just comes naturally for us. Yeah. So the last thing you want to be doing when you're feeling low or depressed is sitting down and feeling sorry for yourself. We sort of want to be thinking, I need to move this machine. This is built to move. And if you want to feel good, emotions is created by motions. So we need to get up and at them and we need to get that body moving, whether that's resistance, whether that's going outdoors and releasing endorphins or doing some sort of cardio or walking with some friends. It's moving the body and get, getting that system moving because that's where our emotions are going to start feeling good. Yeah. Did you want to add to anything to that? I got <laughs> That's okay, that's not a problem. Next, number two, nutrition. So um, sugar feeds anxiety. So if you're feeling like a bit anxious or if you're feeling a bit low, you wanna avoid sugar as much as possible. All processed foods, anything that's not really natural, if you're looking at the back of food labels and you don't even know what these words are, avoid it avoid it majority of the time even if you're feeling good avoid it if it comes from the earth if it grows out of the earth 
then it's good to go. That's very TNT. We want to keep it natural. We want to look for your micro and macronutrients, so lots of greens. Um, get your protein intake up nice and high, but we always want to aim for good nutrition. Did you want to add anything to that? No. no. All right, I've got a bit of a list here in front of us. So um, it was funny. I was training in the gym this morning and Steph's hormones are a little bit out of whack and I feel like I might be feeling that a little bit. And I was training in here and Steph came in and she's like, I think I'm going to do a training session. And I was like, I was like, you might try this too, but I was like ready to like, you know, sweat it out or something. Like she it was the last she thing literally walked up and it looked like she'd just been bawling her eyes out. And <laughs> I, I said, the last thing you want to be doing is picking up a weight right now. Let me wrap up this session because I didn't, I didn't feel great during my session, to be honest. And I said, let me wrap up my session. I'll finish it off. I'll come inside and we'll go for a big walk with the dogs. And it was, it was beautiful. We got the bodies moving. I knew Steph would have responded really well to that. Yeah. And um, we, we went still- We for a walk this morning and then we've also, we went to the beach as well. We had the phone call of our NIPT test and I bawled my eyes out because for me, that was supposed to be an exciting moment to find out the gender and if our baby was healthy. And yeah, yeah I didn't tell them because I'll probably never see them again. They're on the Gold Coast. So I just said, thank you. And then after that, I was feeling really low and we just walked the beach. And initially yeah. my body language, I was, you know, like this and I was really struggling to even like Joel was cracking all the dad jokes, trying to just lift me somehow. and. I noticed the jokes weren't working, crying. but then I then I got a little bit deeper and I just explained, you know, there's a plan for us all and it is all perfect. Yeah. Everything happens for a the reason. Movement, the movement did help in the sense I have had a lot of times where I have dishonored myself and just sat and just being quiet. But then I feel like movement does help get the energy out of your body rather than sitting there. For sure. Um, all day. Yep. Yeah. I was also explaining to Steph, yeah, we didn't have a baby, a, a human being, but the spirit has come and it's around us and it's always yeah. going to be with us. And one day, whatever form it's going to come back to us, whether it's a boy or a girl or a dog or another horse, we've got so many horses, um, it's always, yeah, we're, we're going to, it's always going to come back to us. So um, I think that really did help. Did. And it's funny, like, I was so upset, but then I still had to say, I knew it was a girl, because I did. <laughs> I was like, I know it's a girl. We, we were both <laughs> actually hoping for a girl, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. So the next, um, number four, limit technology and social media. So a lot of our problems and issues does come from that phone of ours. And if your one's... If you can go into your um, settings and find out how much screen time you're doing, if it's anything over four hours a day, yeah. you need to bring that down yeah. dramatically. Yeah. And I don't know what the standard rate. Or the I mean, technology really is a good thing. I mean, I feel like at the moment, I've been using it to my advantage of looking for healing music and healing anything, anything that I can put my, eyes and ears on I'm, I'm trying to find it um so if you guys have anything you want to share with me please send it through but i feel like just limiting your technology but also what you're actually watching is really important for sure um whether you're going through a hard time or not i feel like it it definitely helps shape your life with what you're ingesting we're now focusing on what you guys are putting in your, your mouth but it's also so important to watch what you're Watching. Feeding your, Sorry, your brain. No, that's you fine. You, you've you got to watch what you're feeding your mind yeah. and your thoughts. And our thoughts are getting more and more numb because these phones are telling us what to do and how to do it. Yeah. Um, where life really does start outside our doors. Yeah. Living I mean, like moments. Again, you know, we've, we've created so much magic with <clears throat> technology. For sure. Um, we connect a lot of people, amazing like people. Yeah, I feel like if you have a purpose like that to, if you guys are jumping on here to make someone else's day better, which you guys have been doing every day for us, so thank you so much. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's just something to keep in mind any time that you are going through a tough time, the first thing that we do is just really, really get strict with limiting what we are actually doing on the technology. Definitely. Um, number five, meditation and breath work. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're feeling anxious, and your thoughts are racing a million miles an hour, 
try and bring it back to your breath. It's the one thing that we can control. I put in a post the other day and me, I cannot sit still. So meditation, I need to train. No. If, if it's a should, it's a must. So I need to get better at meditation. But my meditation is walking along the beach. I love, that's that's my, yeah. I feel recharged afterwards. I, I don't know, I just get an energy from the ocean and I feel like that's my Zen zone. And I always work on my breath work while I'm there, I do something like four seconds in, hold for four seconds, four mean, seconds out, meditation hold for is four so, seconds. So different for everyone. Everyone is so different when it comes to finding ways to quiet your mind. So whatever it is, maybe just start with sitting there quiet. And if that's not for you, walk. Yep. And if that's not for you, listen to something, do a guided. There's so many different ways that you can meditate and focus on your breath that are ways that you enjoy and resonate with. Yep. So, I know that it changes for me daily. So. <laughs> it's a it's a muscle that you we all should be training. Um, so you know we're flexing these muscles in the gym and we're building up these biceps and triceps, but we should be training that mind yeah. to calm and be empty as much as possible because all of us have got these thoughts running around all day and meditation and even breath work, concentrating on your breathing is the key to combat that. Um, number six. Gratitude, be grateful for what you've got, what's in front of you, everything that you've got surrounded by you, like I said before, it is all perfect. You are perfect as a person. Every situation that happens to you is all meant to be. No matter what you think, oh, but what if, or what if, or what if that happened, it doesn't matter, Like it, it happened. That's the way it was meant to be. So we need to be grateful for all the situations that have happened, and we need to be grateful for everything that you've got. Yeah. Do you need to add to that? I really like that one because I feel like, you know, you get so excited about things like you guys are doing an eight week challenge right now. You guys are so excited and focused on the results, but it's also really important to be also grateful for what you have right now. Because yeah. as you guys have just seen and you've witnessed yourself in your own lives somewhere along the line, things can change like that. Yeah. So it's just really important to look around you and take in what you've got now because the more you can do that, the more you're filling your own love cup up. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, you've got to enjoy that journey every really step of the way. It's really hard to do, especially when you like a time like this. I'm like, I know, I know, I'm so grateful. But it's like you had this vision though and you just you keep going. But I thought it was going to be like this and it's just you've got to keep reminding yourself. It's not always forward. going to go according to plan. Yeah. So yeah. you just got to enjoy that ride and expect the unexpected. And these things happen for every single reason. Yeah. Okay. Number seven, sleep <laughs> for your hormones, for your training, for everything. It recharges your batteries. We need to prioritize sleep. And as I said before, limit technology, cut off the t social media, the technology, at least two hours before you go to bed. Please do not even have the phone next to your bed. Get rid of that, that's- Ours are all in flight mode. They're in our house in the kitchen, but then they go on flight mode. In the kitchen. They stay in the kitchen. <laughs> the bedroom's for the bed and sleep. <laughs> the kitchen's for the eat and that's where we get the phone. What was the second? You know, <laughs> making babies. Okay. Um, number eight, we need to stop blaming others and we need to stop blaming ourselves. We need to, the past is the past. We need to move forward. We can grieve, we can appreciate the feelings of sadness, appreciate the feelings of crying. It's amazing, that's beautiful to have those sort of feelings. That's what life is. Mm -hmm. So many people bottle the shit down and they don't cry. This is a feeling of <laughs> I uh, think humans. Every Every single place I've been in the last two or three days, I've been crying in all those and you And <laughs> she says sorry to everyone, and I keep saying, I stop saying sorry. You gotta stop saying sorry. If you're gonna cry, cry. Enjoy that feeling, because that's it's being true. a human. I just said to Joel though, I said, I'm really apologizing, because I'm usually the one that's so strong, and happy and vibrant, and uh, I like to be the strength for everyone, and at the moment I have nothing of it. <laughs> and so I'm apologizing. 
out of I don't know where it's coming from, but it's so true what Joel says. Like being just, a human, we laugh, we cry, we enjoy it. Yeah. We're putrid. <laughs> we, <laughs> like we just you gotta enjoy like the that's ride. The slogan of this challenge. E every <laughs> single every single moment we need to embrace it and appreciate it. Yeah. So all of the isn't it crazy? All I mean, the blame that we a, did back in the day. A couple of weeks ago, I was like, we were pumped at the video. Shit's gonna happen, guys. Oh. Yeah. Every challenge, you got kicked in the face by your horse. The other one, I got black eye. Down. It's, a, it's always a hurt. <laughs> I can I can run around and do backflips off the roof and everything. I'm sweet. No, no drama. Poor Steph, she goes through all of it. <laughs> But we need to stop blaming others and stop blaming yourself. And that's what Steph's been doing a lot lately and I have to... I'm still battling with it. I, I won't lie, I'm still battling with it because I still feel like for some reason I'm, I feel like I didn't do something or I did do something. I know, I get it, but my I have to constantly have something overriding that at the moment because it's probably my most common thought is... What did I do or what didn't I do? And, did, the, and I, I, I feel explained. like it might just be human nature in those situations where you just naturally think it was you. And I've explained to Steph just after it happened, the day after, I said to her, no matter what I say or no matter what anyone else says or no matter what thoughts come up, you did everything perfect. And that's it. That's all you can say. You've got to stop saying Subway. You've got to stop saying cheese. Oh, Joel, maybe Joel, I shouldn't have lifted that weight that day. You've got to stop saying that. He literally stopped me. He said, Steph, you're one of the healthiest people I've ever met. That's made. it. <laughs> but even if you weren't healthy, you, you women do everything perfect that you can when it comes to pregnancy. So you've got to stop blaming yourself or stop searching. Well, what am I looking for? Stop. We need to, it is what it is. And we need to be able to move on from it. We can grieve through it. But we need to realize the spirits out there we need to move on and it's going to come back to us tenfold but we need to embrace this moment as much as possible okay number nine communication so first thing you want to do is just stay at home and when you're depressed when you're low you don't want to talk to anyone and that's good like you can do that there's moments where you should be doing that for yourself but then for there's sure. there's moments you need to get out of your comfort zone and you need to socialize with the right people that want to help and support, that want to listen to what you have to say. Sometimes you've got to tell someone what's going on. Sometimes you've got to seek medical, uh, professional help. Of it's actually really hard when you're going through such a painful thing. I never ever thought I would be in a situation where I was actively avoiding people. Like I am so overwhelmed with love and family and friends but I've never had like an anxiety attached to seeing people. I've always loved people and I still do, but it's because I'm not myself. I feel I'm avoiding them because I don't want to be seen as rude or upset or not myself. So I'm actively trying to avoid it, but it's been an integral part of actually healing. Like I'm feeling better because I have spoken to people. I have tried my best to be myself and see our friends and you know my mum come over last night and even that's a lot I love my mum and I was overwhelmed even with that like it was just it's a lot to deal with at times in your life you know for me I can really empathize with that right now but I feel like it is really really important so to important. still like Joel said still take the time for yourself but communication I feel like if I didn't communicate this, you know, with you guys, I'm so grateful to have you. And that's you. helped a lot. You guys that have helped me helped so much. Lot. Like normally, like I said in my post um, yesterday, um, you know, I, <laughs> I could have brain fuck. <laughs> I can't remember what I was gonna say. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Communication is the key. So I just wanna quickly remind you guys, this isn't just for a miscarriage. This is for mental health. So if you're suffering with any sort of depression or if you're suffering with your low times where you're just not feeling energized, you feel like shit, you don't wanna do anything and you just can't you get, get yourself out of this rut, we're just giving you some dot points of how, me personally, how I get through these things. I don't even realize I do this sort of stuff and how I'm helping Steph at the moment and how we help each other at these times. Don't get me wrong, I have my putrid days. I have balcony putrid days. 
I have Balkan days and I have Balkan future days. So <laughs> you're not alone on that. I'm yes, I'm energized. I'm always happy on social media, but you don't see behind the scenes. There's ups and downs. Don't worry about that. It's still lovely. But this isn't just for miscarriage. This is for everybody out there that may be suffering with a bit of low time, a bit of depression. They, we're just going to give you. We're just giving you some tips, some dot points of how the research that I've done and how you could possibly get yourself out of there. Okay, feel good? Definitely communicate. Um, Providing you can remember what you're gonna say. One thing I do really well every day, pen to paper. I write out my goals, I'm writing out my thoughts, whatever comes up in my brain. There is truckloads <laughs> of shit that goes on in this brain of mine. I don't know so about much. yours, but it's nonstop. As you guys know, Joel is a special, special human and this is why he has built this company and why you guys are achieving such amazing results because his brain goes faster than your average human. It is always, Doesn't stop. It is always going, he is always thinking of you guys, he's always thinking of everything going really fast. You can imagine that your life goes like this speed and Joel's life in his head goes like three times that. Which has which been is, amazing to live on land get outdoors get active on on the land I, I do love that but writing out my thoughts writing out your thoughts that's been a big one it, it unclutters it unclutters your mind so when i write down my dot points of what i'm thinking about i put that pen to paper and it sort of just leaves in my mind and i can put my mind at ease so i feel like depression low times the mind doesn't stop. That's when it it really does get to you. I feel like when we're feeling good, the the, the mind's clear. Yeah. We're feeling good. Everything's beautiful, clear, no dramas. When we're feeling low, the mind's got so much going on. Writing that writing pen to it, paper really it does down help. And communicating. I feel like if you're not doing those two things alone, it's going to bottle up and come out another way in your body. You know, you don't want to get sick. You don't want to get diseases. Mm. I feel like it's really important as an overall health tool for you guys to, well, and me, and Joel, everyone, to communicate and write things down so that it's not living in your body anymore. You can you can cleanse it, and then you can look at it from afar and be like, okay, which of this do I want to deal with, and which of this is just, I don't need to give that any more thought, yep. sort of thing. Yep. So I feel like it's another good thing for your health. Yep, so get yourself a nice... Pad. I hope I'm making some nice better, book. Guys. Get yourself a good pen and start writing down. Just journal. Just start writing down your thoughts. Just put a put your checklist down. Not not in your phone. Pen to paper. It just makes it a little bit more special, and you can carry it around with you. Go to a nice cafe. You look like you're doing some work. Get it all down. Joel's book says get shit done. It does. It says get shit done. <laughs> and I do. Like, I do. It I does. <laughs> Like I lied about it. No, no, it does. <laughs> okay, last point that we're going to touch on is the secret of living is giving. So when you help other people, you learn. That's where yeah. you really, you could go to university, you could go to college, you could go to TAFE, you can learn all the tools that you need, but it's not until you start getting on the gym floor and teaching other people how to do it and teaching what their pe these people are about, that's where you learn everything. That's where I learn everything. Dealing with the people, helping the people. So the secret of living is giving. So when you get out of your comfort zone and teach other people what you're going through when or you share, talk. You know, like I said this morning, I'm not an expert when it comes to healing. I'm not an expert at all. I just know I'm doing the best I can. And if I can share with what doesn't work and what does work along this journey through this painful journey hopefully someone else can benefit from that and then you know i'm i already know that people that have been through it that are sharing with me i'm learning from them mm. so i feel like by being open and honest just as one little thing of your way of giving back to the world it it definitely makes a huge difference For sure. in someone else's so life you... because you guys have impacted ours so greatly i can't yeah. even put it into words of how much you guys have helped give us somewhat peace of mind that we're not broken and I didn't do anything. Not alone. Yeah, we're not alone. So And although it's just the love and support and some of the, oh, like we've, Steph's got that many links off professionals that she can now research into. I'm trying to get back into. to everyone. So I'm so sorry if I haven't even responded to all of you. I'm trying my best. But going back to the secret of living is given, it's not, 
it's not just about you know teaching other people it's not just about donating money although I, I've used to say I've said it many times but I'm feeling like shit today I, I feel like I'm ready to donate some money to some you sort do. of charity and it made me feel better um, but you know it's even just giving a bit of your time and a bit of your presence to people um, I feel like you do really get a heap of energy that from is that where energy in life is whether it's sadness or happiness or whatever it is sharing moments with people and learning from each other and just connecting in more meaningful ways is is the secret of living it, it, it really, is. really is so if you're ever feeling a bit flat or if you're feeling a bit I low i think these guys get it because they have done nothing but give the last few days to us our so. community <laughs> Is honestly, I don't know how we've I think done you guys it. Already get this too. But our community is like, they literally joined the challenge to help. They just want to <laughs> help everyone, and they love seeing everyone else transform. We see they love you. Transforming. We see you guys even jumping in the last few days because you, you know what we're going through. So you're trying to answer other people's questions. Love it. It's, and like I laugh in like having this of like how amazing are these people? Like, it's just it. It's mind-blowing. You guys are amazing. So You're it's so lucky. The secret of living is giving. So whether if you wanted to donate a present, donate your time, a little bit of your energy, a little bit of your presence, that's where you're going to get the energy. So if you're sitting at home, you're blaming yourself, you're wondering, why me? Why do I feel like this? Hopefully, we've given you some tips on how to possibly get out of these low times as much as possible. We understand... We've been through some stuff in the last few days and Does it's it, it's it not going to be over and done with anytime soon. But we totally get that you, there's a lot of people that have been through so much worse, mm. ridiculous. Can't imagine what you guys are going through, but hopefully these tips can somewhat get you out of there a little bit. Okay. Mm. Sorry about 42 minutes. It was the never thing, gonna be a short video. The thing I need some help with now is how long is this gonna to take to upload? <laughs> how long is that gonna to take to upload? I now Forever. have to be strength for Joel because he's gonna be walking around throwing his laptop around and saying, why isn't it uploading? <laughs> you guys have seen this, it means we did it, we uploaded it. <laughs> we love you fam, sorry it's taken so long. We Hopefully this has helped. Thanks for listening into the story. Um, thank you so much for all of your love and support. Um, you guys are amazing. Thank you so we much for the links. Without you guys, honestly, so so grateful. All the links that you guys have sent, I have personally started. Beautiful messages. Beautiful. I'm already booking in to certain places that you guys have said. So thank you so so much. It, it really is so so beautiful. Steph's gonna book into some places, and I'm gonna look at booking myself a holiday. Okay. <laughs> Love yous. <laughs> See you. Bye. Bye.